What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I figured we'd check back in on Astronarch. It's been about a year since we checked this game out. I think it was right at the beginning of 2021 that I took a look at it. And this is one of those games that it's not pretty to look at, but there's actually a lot of depth here. If you've never seen Astronarch before, this is effectively a party-based auto-battling RPG roguelike where your goal is to take a party and augment their abilities and add gear onto them and equipment and stack their synergies in order to go as deep down into a dungeon as possible. It actually has a lot in common with something like the dungeon beneath, in all honesty. And so anyways, while the dungeon beneath is very, very kind of slow and very deliberate, uh, this game is much more fast-paced with a lot of things happening. However, there is a lot of depth here. I will give you a warning right here at the beginning of the video. I am not very good at this game. I started going through and reading guides and stuff like that just because my progress was so stunted. And so anyways, don't expect like top tier premium gameplay from this one. I'm just going to go on in. I'm going to explain to you how the gameplay mechanics work. Hopefully put this game on your radar so that you can check it out for yourself. And you can find that link down below if indeed this game looks like it's going to scratch that particular itch for you. On top of that, down below in the description, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. But without wasting any more more time just babbling along. Let's go ahead and start the game off. Uh, one thing that this game does very, very well is variety. There is a lot of stuff going on with this game, and people have created just ridiculous spreadsheets and stuff to show you exactly like what is more effective on this character, defense or HP, or should you be stacking speed or attack? And they've got like these giant Excel spreadsheets where they've derived like the perfect values to put on the many myriad characters that exist inside the confines of this game. And so anyways, what we've got to do at the beginning of the game is we've got to pick three heroes. Obviously, I haven't unlocked a lot of them. I've unlocked some of them, but I've still got the ones left over that are kind of like... I've still got a number left over uh, that actually require you to do achievements effectively to unlock, like the ones that are like, oh, sell 10 potions to the same merchant, you know what I mean? Stuff like that is just I haven't gotten around to it, or when I'm playing the game, I tend to forget about it. When they weaponize achievements like that to unlock characters, I tend to just, like, lose track of them and then never achieve them. It's the same problem I have with, like, Tarkov. You know, like, Escape from Tarkov, you'll have, like, 150 missions just sitting around in your task tab, and you just, like, forget to do any of them because there's just so many in there that you're like, and then you're, like, randomly doing them on accident. Uh, pretty much the same thing with me in this game. All right, so I'm going to take the Juggernaut because he tanks it up. The Juggernaut's got a lot of HP. He's got decent defense. He's pretty fast. Uh, the first time you reduce below 50% max HP, increase your attack and defense and heal for 15% of your HP. So I believe that in most cases, he's going to stack very, very well with us just adding HP to him rather than adding defense. So that should be pretty cool. I've actually never played the Brawler before. Like, the Brawler seems like he'd be a lot of fun, but we only take three guys right now, so I'm just going to kind of leave it where it is. Uh, other characters that we can bring along, I figure I'll bring the Ronin. That sounds good. Uh, the Ronin has a 10% chance to put a fat bleed on the enemy, and then he's got an ability called Rising Gale, where he deals just a ton of damage to his target and all adjacent enemies. And so anyways, pretty good. And then we're going to need somebody in the back line. I sort of feel like... I sort of feel like a wizard would be pretty cool of some kind, or like some kind of healer, maybe like a cleric. Yeah, let's go with a cleric. Uh, the cleric's pretty bog standard. The cleric heals people. That's what the cleric does. The cleric does a healy boy. And so anyways, deal 50% attack damage to your target when you hear a hero, heal a hero by any means. So we, gonna, we kind of want to put like items on this guy that make heals bounce around a lot so that he's actually primarily dealing DPS from like heals over time ticking and stuff like that. Uh, we'll play around with it. We'll kind of play it by ear as we go down into the dungeon. But that's all three of our guys. The game is comprised into a number of acts. Every time you complete an act, you get to add a new guy to your party roster from this list. It basically brings you back to the tavern. And there are some pretty wild builds you can do in this game. This is definitely a game for people that like to fiddle with things and like adjust variables. Uh, this guy's just telling us roughly the story. It's got the same thing going on as Slay the Spire. Every single time you lose, when you come back into the beginning of the game, you get to pick up a buff. Uh, I've got a lot of characters that seem to benefit from having HP. Yeah, like our heal is percentage-based on HP, and his, like, active is percentage-based. 
So like, I'm thinking, I think I want him to be right there for tanking. But anyways, I think I'm gonna go with the HP buff so that everybody just has 10% more HP because that'll increase his heal by quite a lot. He's already getting a bunch of HP buffs from like his random passive abilities that go off. And so I think that's gonna be really, really nice for stacking with this team. So you've got yourself an FTL style grid right here. You wanna pick what you wanna do. These silver guys are battles. Uh, these orange guys are elite battles. These green guys right here are events. That's a merchant. And then of course that's a boss. Uh, the thing that you're trying to do in order to avoid losing is you've got this stat over here called your morale. Anytime somebody gets knocked out, you lose one morale. However, every time you defeat a fight, you get four morale. So it is very possible to continue having a positive gaining morale even though you're losing characters. And so ultimately, like, one loss in this game does not signal the end of your game like it does in so many other roguelikes. Uh, you get to have, like, repeated losses. However, what I found is once you start the death spiral, it's underway. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just go straight up the middle, right up Main Street. And we've got this kind of weird off-brand Kmart Pokemon looking thing right here. I guess Kmart's been closed now for like 20 years. I probably can't reference Kmart anymore, can I? So things you need to be aware of, these bars. You got HP at the top, you got MP in the middle. When their MP gets up to maximum, they'll cast whatever their active ability is. And then underneath that, what was the third bar? There's something underneath there. It might just be their auto attack meter. I'll look the next time we go into fight. The game does provide you with a really, really awesome DPS synopsis over here so that you can figure out who's doing the lion's share of kind of your hacking and slashing and murdering and, you know, blood distribution. And we've got an unstable orb but that makes you start with 10 MP and gives you 10 defense. Attackers have a chance to receive a minor curse. We have a crystalline protector over here. Once again, a mage item. It gives you 15 starting HP, 5 defense, and at the start of combat, you gain 250 shield. This guy right here, Mana Spring Amulet, gives you 50 HP, gain 20% more MP per second. It is unique probably put that on the wizard I guess every character has three item slots every single item can be upgraded twice in addition your characters can be leveled up uh, either by their own passive means so some characters get like extra HP or extra attack every time you kill an enemy uh, some don't get anything at all but either way both this active and this passive right here you'll occasionally find like red and blue orbs uh, you can use those to upgrade their abilities twice as well. And in fact, deciding who is the actual anchor of your team that's keeping you going and putting the orbs on them in order to allow them to carry even harder tends to be like a big decision in this game. On to our next fight. Over here, we've also got our gold when we get to shops. You know, we make money. I'm going to guess greed is good. I'm going to guess that the developer was an EVE Online fan. That's going to be my guesstimate. All right, so the little wolfy boy's going down pretty easy. In fact, we're sort of like finishing off with perfect health here. Not bad. I'll take it. We got some more items to play around with. We've got the Bone Spike Armor. 15 defense attackers bleed for 20 damage over 10 seconds. We've got Cobra's Reach. Your attacks poison your target, dealing 5 damage every 3 seconds. Doesn't he have something? Yeah, his attacks have a 10% chance. So we probably want to put the Cobra's Reach on him. Unless this Enchanter's brand is just something unbelievably awesome. Uh, it gives 10 attack. And you're immune to disarm. I don't know if I want to put the speed on him since he does have a proc. So he's got a 10% chance to put a fat bleed on people. And we kind of want that to go off as much as possible. And on top of that, he deals additional damage with his active attack for each time that he struck the enemy that he targets with it prior to the active attack going off. And so, like, that 10% speed right there I think is going to matter. Like, I think that's actually going to be really, really important for making him into just, like, a really, really good character. And so, anyways, I think speed decreases when you put it on there. So he's at 1.8 speed right now compared to the 2.2 speed. I think that's actually, like, the literal amount of seconds in between their attacks. But I'd have to check on it. A lonely mushroom out in the middle of the forest. What's up, little fungus? What you doing out here? This is a dangerous neighborhood for shiitake mushrooms, brother. I've been craving a mushroom skewer all day. Down he goes. He's off. Uh, what else we got here? We've got the witch stick. 10 starting MP plus 5 attack. Your attacks steal 1 MP from your target. The High Elf Claymore, your attacks have a 20% chance to deal an additional 100% attack damage to your target. That actually stacks decently well with the speed that we've put onto the Ronin so far. The Rod of Casting. 
also not terrible, also not awful. And as you can see, his DPS did go up by about 80 from us giving him that 10% attack speed. So, like, I don't know what he would get more mileage out of, the High Elf Claymore or the Rod of Casting. I don't know what the better decision is here. Of course, if you're feeling overwhelmed at any time, you can just take a fat stack of gold and just buy the thing that you wanted to shop. But yeah, I'm kind of torn between... I mean, the Witch Stick wouldn't be terrible on the Cleric. It wouldn't be bad. It would let him heal more frequently. I guess I'll put the Claymore on the Ronin and just kind of see what happens. I don't know if that's going to be a smart decision, but after staring at it for a little bit, I feel like he's giving us a lot of DPS. We'll keep an eye on it in this fight right here, and we'll just see the way that it goes, or I guess DPF. It's how much damage he's dealt per fight at this point. Yeah, his damage definitely went up once again. I mean, that fight didn't have a whole lot of sustain to it, so it's hard to say with any, like conclusivity if that's even a word it's hard to say it conclusively if it actually increased it because that fight was kind of short in duration but anyways uh fool's crown 100 hp okay the symbiote 50 hp reduce the cost of your active ability every time it's used okay and then we've got bone spike armor i'll probably go with the fool's crown on him just to get his hp up so that the cleric heals for more. Do we take an elite battle? Yeah, I think we do. If we get starched, oh well, but I found with games like this, it's almost universally the case where you want to take the hardest fights you can possibly take all the time. I can't decide. I guess the red line doesn't go all the way up. I think he's going to be hitting the juggernaut, but it's kind of hard to say at this junction. Yeah, keep him all nice and healed up. We seem to be doing okay, unless he's got some kind of crazy ace up his sleeve. Oh, he's AoEing us. That's the ace up his sleeve. Okay, so you gotta beat him before the AoE. You can mouse over the enemies, by the way. I'm I'm not doing it right now because I'm remedial. But anyways, you can mouse over the enemies, and when you mouse over them, it'll tell you exactly what they do. We have an ability orb. This will increase someone's passive ability. I think we want to buff the tank. That's where I think we start out. And so anyways, now he heals and gets a lot more attack and defense for 10 seconds when he gets down to 50% HP. In addition, I think I'll just throw another Fool's Crown on him. There's a character unlock for having three of the same item on one character. So we'll keep an eye out for it. In fact, I'll probably try to go to this shop right over here and see if I can find a third one. Uh, that way I can unlock that character on this run because this is one of the rare cases where I actually remember the way to unlock one of the characters. And I would very much like to do it. I think we've got healing reduced or something right now. But, if you look, his heal over time that he puts on himself is actually pretty good. Like, it makes it pretty difficult for the enemy to DPS through. I'm happy to see it. So, 10 starting HMP, 10 defense. We've got 50 HP, 10 defense. When losing 20% of your HP in a single hit, you gain a shield equal to 5% of your max HP, and you deal 30 damage to all enemies. We've got the Enchanter's Chainmail over here for, like, another 15 defense. However, from what I was reading, like, a lot of people were saying that it's almost universally better based on your build to just go flat HP all the time because so many of the abilities and whatnot scale with HP. Like, they said defense is good, but only up to a certain point. And then it starts to have, like, very diminishing returns. I think. I mean, this is the best of both worlds. He gets a little bit more HP, and he gets some defense. And we can obviously swap this out for, like, more awesome stuff later on. Let's go to the shop. We've got a little bit of cash that we're sitting on right now, so we'll take a look and see if we can get anything good here. Uh, we have the Hero's Sigil. At the start of combat, you and adjacent allies get a shield equal to 15% of your maximum HP. It's not bad, 150 damage shield to everybody around him, especially if we get a fourth character that goes right there. We've got the Oaken Knot. Uh, that gives 50 HP, and it heals for 2% max HP every two seconds. What's 2% on? So he's going to be healing for around, like, 22 HP per second. That's pretty good, actually. Especially if I can throw an upgrade on that thing and get it up to like 3 or 4%. That's not terrible for the Juggernaut. Like, I like it. 
All right, so we've also got 35 starting MP5 defense. We've got attack and active ability damage you take has a 12% chance to be prevented. That's also kind of decent. Like, it's not bad for a tank. Although, honestly, I'm not much of a gambler, so I would rather we have, like, a a non-RNG-related way to keep ourselves topped off. Now we've got the Shard of the Deep at the start of combat. Gain 15 Frail Attack and 15 Frail Speed. That's also not the worst pick that I've ever seen for the Ronin. It is frail, which is a little worrying. I think I'm going to go with fortifying the tank first. Now, a fun thing about this game, you don't lose your items when you move them around. You can keep them in reserve forever. I can pull these items off of anybody that I want to right this second. And so that's one thing that's kind of like, I think it's a little bit different from the dungeon beneath, I think. In the dungeon beneath, I think once you put something on somebody, it's like on them uh, until, until further notice or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's been a while. I do want to upgrade this 4%. So he's getting 24 HP per second. Yeah, do that. And then I'm going to try to upgrade that a second time at my earliest convenience. Because he's getting really, really good HP off of that. And I think if I can upgrade it one more time so that he's getting around 80 HP every single time it ticks, he should be able to withstand the storm of enemies hitting him pretty viably, in my opinion. I mean, I, I do I do like the hero sigil, and there are other things that I was interested in having. Unfortunately, our finances are just not in place for it right now. And so the real question is, do I go for the elite battle? Yeah, let's go for the elite battle. Why not? We're doing really, really well on morale. So even if we lose, I'm not that upset about it. The heroes discover an ancient and ominous altar. The inscription reads, He who has no charity deserves no mercy. From Sal, the Holy Mother, there is a pile of gold. In the offering bowl. Uh, yeah, I'll take five free morale. Why not? I'm kind of low on money anyways. You heed the message on the altar and offer what gold you can spare. Very nice. Okay, let's take the elite fight. And hopefully this one doesn't straighten us out. Hopefully this goes pretty well and we don't get starched. Uh, the, the real issue for this party is going to be enemies that have access to AoE abilities. Because we've got our other guys built like really, really, really squishy. Like extra strength squishy. Uh, and we've put pretty much all of our money riding on the tank holding. And so that's a very, very real blind spot in our overall kind of repertoire. Is like we don't have a contingency plan for enemies that use a high volume of AoE damage. However, we made it on through. We didn't have any major problems. So life is good. We got a red ability orb. I'm going to slap that onto the cleric so that he heals even harder. Uh, we can take a giant's club. Your attacks deal additional damage equal to current 3% of your current HP. Okay, so not 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 an awful pick. The Arcane Stabilizer. The first time you're reduced to below 35% HP, gain a shield that is 10% of your max HP, and then heal for the same amount over 10 seconds. Meh. Uh, the Symbiote we've already seen. I don't know. I'll probably just take the club for right now, because I've got nothing else going on anyways. I'm not inherently super stoked about taking the club, but neither am I depressed and weeping in the corner about it. Like, you know, I'm going to swap it out later on, but like it's something. Uh, we do have a couple items in here. We do have the hero sigil, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got the lich wraps. That's pretty good for the healer. It allows him to get an early game heal off even faster. And then it also lowers the amount that he needs in order to cast his heal. We've got a bandit's hood. It makes you hidden. So you cannot be targeted. Your attacks have a 5% chance to gain a gold. Not the worst. We've also got the Book of the First. Every five times you attack, you and a random ally get negate. And so apparently negate is like a... It's a shield for status effects, effectively. So the status effect, instead of being applied, will eat your stack of negate. Uh, the Bandit Hood is an interesting option for the Ronin, I think. But the Giant's Club, I think, works just as well with that 3% HP conversion. I mean, obviously, the Giant's Club is probably not... It, it would serve much, much better on the Juggernaut. But, you know. 
Let's try the bandit hood out. We'll throw that on him. That's got his speed down by another tenth of a second, so that's good. All right. Uh, we will take the third elite fight. I, I feel like we've been doing a pretty good job, and I think we unlock a character by getting all the elite fights in one run. And so I'd like to give that a go. Everybody's on fire right now. Things could be better. We on fire up in here. The city's hot. We on fire. Man, it's been a while since a Lloyd Banks reference was relevant. I feel a little old and embarrassed for myself, but then again, that Lloyd Banks song that was at the beginning of Saints Row 2, man, that was a banger. Me and that shorty when you party with me, we're going way past quarter to three. Dude, that was that song was a banger. Ooh, the Zephyr Pendant. Increase your speed by 2% per second. Ooh. That's kind of spicy. So he'll get the 10% in the first five seconds. Do it. Yeah, let's do it. We'll throw that on you. There's no reason not to just throw whatever items we have laying around on people. Let's go for it. Giant spider. Giant spiders and RPGs. Name a more iconic duo. The giant spider. The spidarian lord. Yeah, you can see his attack meter speeding up right now. He's like a human minigun. Dude, he's attacking so fast. This is crazy. The only reason he's not getting totally out of control is that the spider has an ability that lowers your speed. That's literally it. Uh, we got another ability orb. We want the heal to be maxed out, so his heal is now max level. That means we can focus on other people pretty soon. We've got the noble ward. We've got the bound elements for every three at times you attack, apply. A frost and a burn for 75% attack damage to your target. We have the symbiote. I think that actually goes pretty well right there. We have to give up on the gold, and he loses his hidden. But he should be attacking pretty quickly, which means we should get a lot of those applications right there for a lot of bonus damage. I would think, anyways, just rationalizing through it in my head. But this is what I mean about Astronarch, where it's not like a particularly pretty game, but the soundtrack is good enough. You know, the sound effects, meh, nothing to write home about. The art design and all that stuff, like, meh, it's got kind of like a sword, like a Super Brothers type inspired thing going on. But ultimately, they've got enough depth and layers to the builds and the systems in this game that it's kind of like Tales of Majael. Like, you want to play because you don't know what's going to come up, and every run is so different from the last run. You know, one run you might be building a totally attack centric Astronarch, you know, Ronin. And then on another run, you're doing like this weird speed build with AOE applications and everything. Like, it's kind of cool watching the program come together, in my opinion. When you are knocked out, you will continue fighting for five seconds. Enemies ignore you can only activate once. That seems like planning to lose. I tend to avoid strategies that are like plan to lose. Uh, it will make you hidden, I guess. Having my healer targeted is like one of the worst things ever. However, this hood is going to be really important because when we get new characters, they're not going to be leveled up and they're not going to have items. And so putting the bandit hood on a new character is a good way to protect them. So tower shield. At the start of the combat, you get frail defense. Meh. The hero sigil is still really tempting, but I need to be able to upgrade it. The Plate of the Fallen. You are divine for 3.5 seconds. Divine means you can't take any damage. Uh, it's basically a paladin bubble. And then we've got the Brain Sage. For every 50 MP, 50 MP you expend, heal the weakest hero for 100. We need that. That's really, really good for the, for the Cleric. Uh, because the Cleric not only gets more healing when we apply that, but the Cleric also deals more damage when we apply that. And so basically, I think the Cleric's heal is around, like, yeah, 60 MP right there is how much he has to charge up in order to cast his heal. This guy right here, so he gets basically two heals for every one. So he gets, it's only 100 HP over 10 seconds. I do wish that it had like a percentile component to it, but it's an extra heal that you wouldn't have otherwise. So yeah, I think we're sold on the Brain Sage. I, I would like to do other things, but the Brain Sage is like really, really, really good uh, for our priest, I think. At least for now. It's not going to scale well unless I upgrade it so that it does more HP. Overtime, like we're definitely gonna need to hit that with the hammer from time to time 
in order to make sure it does a good job, but... Alright, over to here. We've got another fight in front of us. Sometimes I lose myself on the map. I wouldn't mind having, like, a little arrow. They've got a fader effect on that, but I wouldn't mind a little green arrow that bounces up and down with where you're at. Uh, as long with the, the thr oh no, dude, they're hitting, like, everybody. That's not good. Okay, well, I'll keep the tank where he's at for right now. I've got a bad feeling about this one, though. If you lose a boss fight, you lose the game, so don't lose boss fights is my advice to you. Hopefully, hopefully they won't hit too hard. There we go, we got one down. So that should eliminate some of the enemy's DPS. Looks like we're partially on the boss right now, and we're partially on his minion. Hey, we pulled through. Yeah, that was one of those fights I was talking about previously where we're going to struggle. Is just because if we can't keep all of the aggro on the tank, nobody else is built to take damage. So we've got the Ancient Codex. If you're below 50% max HP, your ability costs less MP. Okay. The Tundra Talisman. It periodically puts frost on all enemies and gives starting MP, so you get a heal off faster. We've also got 10 attack right here. And it looks like 30% of the damage goes to other enemies. There's nothing here that I'm especially stoked about. There, like, there's nothing here that's tickling my jimmies in a satisfying way. So really our option becomes we either take the money or we take an item in the hopes that we can... I'm going to take an item and we'll just put it in our backpack storage. Oh, that wasn't the boss. That was a normal fight. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, somebody, yeah. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, you're huge. You're huge and terrifying. So it looks like he natively increases the cost of our abilities. All right, that's okay. We're getting a little bit of health back. We are, like, kind of losing the battle, but his ability is about to go off. Yeah, he's in Rampage now. So he should heal a little bit faster now that he's in Rampage. Let's go ahead and drink a potion to put a shield on everybody just to give us a little bit of extra oomph to get through this fight. There we go. Very nice. I mean, one of the things is the samurai, once he spins up, like, he's good to go. It's just he's got to spin up first. I think we should probably... Let's upgrade his rampage so that he gets half of his HP back over 10 seconds. That's really, really good. And then let's go for maybe upgrading his Rising Gale, I guess, so that he can stack it four times now. We've got Legendaries here. So we've got the Demon Prison. Deal 100 piercing damage to all enemies every seven seconds, even while you're unconscious. It's pretty good. That's not bad. Avalanche, when you attack, if your target has 10 Frost, remove all Frost and deal 350% attack damage to your target and any adjacent enemies. We do have Frost every three seconds down here, so we do have a combo right there with Avalanche. If we take a Frost Mage and we put the Frost Necklace and the Frost Sword on him, not a bad combo. And then we've got the God Breaker. Your attacks do 20 piercing damage to your target and all adjacent allies. Any enemies damaged by this have a 20% chance to be stunned for one second. I think that may be our guy if we put the god breaker on him while he's spinning up i think we'll get a lot of mileage out of this that's just my initial thought and if we don't get a lot of mileage out of it we can just swap the the high elf sword back in uh, so we've got characters we can play around with here and look at that we unlocked the bard huzzah we've got ourselves a little guitar boy over here i do have a frost mancer and we do have the items for the Frostmancer, so I think it's time to put him in. Oh, I didn't take the secondary item, though, so no, we don't, actually. Okay. At the start of combat, you gain a shield equal to 25% of your max HP. Yeah, I think that the Wild Mage stacks well here. I think there's a strong argument to be made that we could scoot the samurai back and put the paladin out front to give everybody a fat shield as well if we can stack his defense up to high enough levels. Honestly, I still think the frost mage may be, even with just this necklace, the frost mage won't be bad. Let's take the frost mage in with us. Why not? But yeah, my name is Splattercat. This game is called Astronarch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this game is really, really cool. Like, I think this game is a lot of fun. Like I said, it's not a looker, but it is a player. And so anyways, check out Astronarch down below. The game is done. It is still getting like bug fix updates and it did get a content update, I think like four or five months ago. 
Uh, so the game is still being fiddled with, but it is a fully released product with, like, a meta and, like, guides and everything else. I highly recommend you check it out if you enjoy auto battlers. You're going to have trouble finding anything with much more depth than this. I think this game and uh, the one with the little, the little slave guys that are... Despots game are probably my two favorite auto battlers, but this one's pretty cool. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile of five what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, it was Astronaut. Tomorrow it'll be something else. Thank you for hanging out, and that's about all I got for you.